It's a hadith that's narrated by Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. He says that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give him advice. And he told him not just to make it short, but he said, I really want some you know, impactful advice. Like shake me with this advice. I want, I want it raw. I want straight advice. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ When you stand up to pray, فَصَلِّي صَلَاةً مُوَدِّعٍ Pray as if it is your last prayer. That's the first one. When you stand up to pray, pray as if it is your last prayer. The next advice, وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهُ غَدًا Don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. I love that. Don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. The third thing, and this is the one that really requires a lot of explanation. Lose hope in what other people possess. Lose hope in what other people possess. So again, Salli salatin muwaddir. Pray as if it is your last prayer. Every time you stand up to pray, treat it as if it's your last prayer. وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامْ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهُ غَدًا Don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. وَأَجْمِعِ الْيَأْسَ مِمَّا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ And lose hope in what other people possess. Now let's go through these things. And first and foremost, you identify the common denominator. That you do not take for granted the day that Allah has given you. You do not assume that you will have another day to make things right. You make things right in the moment that you're living in. Because you know, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ As we were just learning from Shaykh Majid, that actions are judged by their endings. And you don't know when those endings are, so you live in the moment that you are in. And you know, there's a, a saying when it comes to work ethic, that work smart, not hard. Because some people exhaust themselves and they translate that exhaustion to success. Move that into the realm of Tuski, into the realm of spirituality. Living in the moment that you are in and focusing on that moment and doing it right. Not assuming that if you do wrong by that moment, that you'll have many other moments to make it right. Living in that moment with the anticipation and the assumption that death will be that very same day. That I will not have another day, therefore I need to get things right today. So let's go through these. Number one, Salli Salatan Muwaddir. Pray as if it's your last prayer. Which relationship is this concerning from the three buckets that I mentioned? I guess you guys aren't awake yet. I got less sleep than you, most of you last night. I'm just saying. So. I, who does this concern? The relationship with who? With Allah, right? This is about your relationship with Allah. Now, one of the most common questions that I get, and one of the most common questions that I'm sure all of the uh, scholars that are here get is how do I gain khushur, humility in my prayer? And there are many different things that we'll talk about, right? In terms of how to gain humility, how to gain peace, how to be mindful in your prayer so that you're not distracted by a bunch of different things. But I want you to think about this. When you do get distracted in prayer, what are you usually distracted by? The thoughts of what you have to do after prayer. Think about it. Most of the time, when you go in salah, the reason why you're rushing or the reason why you're distracted is because you're already thinking about the things that you have to do after prayer. So you're thinking beyond the prayer and therefore not enjoying the prayer that you're in. So you rush it. You're making these plans. You, you, you forget which rak'ah you're on all the time. You get lost in your surahs. Because you're not really there, you're going through the motions, but your mind is engaged in another activity. And the activity that your mind is engaged in is usually the worldly activity that will follow that prayer. So if you disengaged really quickly from something just to get the prayer out the way, you never really disengage that thing. You're just thinking about what you're going to do when you get back to that activity. So your prayer is an interruption in your day, as opposed to being an essential element of your day and the most important part of your day because it concerns the most important relationship of your life and it is the most important thing that you will be asked about on the day of judgment. 
but you are treating it like an interruption of your day. And usually, you're not thinking about your food, you're not thinking about, unless you haven't eaten and you're thinking about the lunch that comes after Salah, you're thinking about what's next in the day. You're making your plans, if you got a phone call coming up, what am I going to say when I talk to this person? If you got a meeting, how am I going to prepare for that meeting? If you got some work to do, how am I going to get that work done? Your mind is thinking ahead of it and the Prophet ﷺ gives you a very simple advice and it's very efficient. Don't think beyond the prayer. Catch yourself, stop yourself. And remind yourself, hey, this could be the last time that I get to stand before Allah in this life and then meet Him standing before Him in the hereafter, asked about how I used to stand before Him in this life. This is my last job interview with Allah effectively. This is the last time that I'm going to have the opportunity to pray. The last time that I'm going to have the opportunity to get this right. And if it's the last time, and it's the first thing I get asked about in the akhirah, the hereafter, then I really, really need to focus and make this right. So mindfulness starts with recognizing what usually takes you away from mindfulness. Saying, you know what? Stop here. Salli salat al Pray as if it's your last prayer. Focus. There is no asr if I'm in dhuhr. There is no maghrib if I'm in asr. And so on and so forth. I cannot guarantee that I'll live to see the next time to say Allahu Akbar and to get into that prayer. So let me treat this prayer right and not think ahead of it. And by doing so, I'm also prioritizing the relationship with Allah over the relationship with everybody and everything else. Start with that. That's your relationship with Allah. The second advice, وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهُ غَدًا Don't say something today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. That life advice would save marriages, it would save friendships, it would save so much. Because when you are in the midst of an argument, you try to say the most hurtful thing that you can in the moment because you're focused on winning the argument with the assumption that there will be a moment of reconciliation. So let me get my hardest punch in now. Let me say the, the most hurtful and damaging thing now. Let me get it all out now because that way, while we're at it, while we're in the midst of this brawl, I'm going to take the heaviest punches that I can. I'm in a slugfest. Later on, I'll come back and I'll fix it all. Assuming that there will be a later on. One of the most hurtful things that, subhanAllah, that, that, that I, and I, I've seen this many times, and it's a sad thing that a lot of, I've seen people who died right after an argument and the family member that they had that argument with, they never forgave themselves because they let that person die in that state. It, it happens. Someone gets in a fight, slams the door, leaves the house, gets in a car accident. Someone gets in a fight, slams the door, leaves the house, that person has a heart attack or a stroke suddenly. The last phone call is tense. And you're like, forget about it, I'll deal with this tomorrow. Don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. Ask yourself in the midst of that conversation, would I be comfortable with this being the final conversation with that person? You know that thing of never go to bed angry? It's real. Because what does Allah say about our night times? That Allah takes our souls and then decides whether or not to restore them in the morning. What that means is that the default is that you are dead at night, not that you're alive. See, our default and our thinking is that I'm going to wake up in the morning. The default is Bismik Allahumma amutu wa ahya. In your name, O oh Allah. I die and I am brought back to life. We go to sleep with the assumption that Allah will not send back our souls to our bodies. And there are people that simply without cause just don't wake up in the morning. Not the opposite. So no, I'm not going to say the most hurtful thing I can possibly say today. I'm in the midst of a, a, a text messaging conversation and it's getting really, really heated. A WhatsApp group or whatever it is that's out there now, right? I'm in this Twitter battle or Facebook comments or... It's, it's just ridiculous. Let me go ahead and get it all out now. And then I'll fix it later. Not recognizing that there might not be a chance to fix it. And who does this usually happen with? Family. It happens with the people closest to you. Because the people that you don't interact with much, 
you're likely to be able to maintain some sort of decorum in a, in a particular environment, some sort of, you know, uh, civility. But when it's someone that you're close to and that you see on a regular basis, you're more likely to get in those heated arguments, and that's usually going to be your family. Your spouse, your children, your parents, your siblings, your closest friends. So, وَلَا تَكَلَّمْ بِكَلَامٍ تَعْتَذِرُ مِنْهُ غَدًا Don't say things today that you'll have to apologize for tomorrow. Catch yourself and think it through. And ask yourself, would I be willing to sleep with this? Would I be willing for this to be the last conversation? The last one is the one that a lot of people have a, lot of, uh, have, have a hard time understanding. وَأَجْمِعِ يَأْسَ مِمَّا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ Lose hope in what other people possess. Despair in what other people possess. Now, yes is actually usually with a negative connotation. Despair is a bad thing, right? Despair, when you talk about despairing in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's a bad thing. It's not healthy, it's debilitating. Despair is bad when you talk about your own potential of growth, which is another form of despair that's related to despair in the mercy of Allah, but it's slightly different in the science of Tazkiyah that it's not that I don't think Allah is merciful enough to forgive me. It's that I don't think that I'll ever really be able to overcome the sin, that I'll really ever be able to grow beyond this temporary state that I'm in right now. But despair in what other people possess is actually very powerful. That doesn't mean that you approach dunya, you approach this world with mediocrity. No, ihsan is a quality, excellence is a quality that the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has prescribed for all things. But I want you to think about how much of your stress, how many of your thoughts at night have been occupied by you feeling insufficient in this dunya because you don't have something that someone else has and that's not always something that's material. And because of that, you're sad, you're lonely, you're stressed out, and you're not able to focus on building what's really important. Because you're too busy stressing over what someone else has. And by the way, that is not something that merely holds you back when you're a teenager, when you're in school. That pressure exists throughout your entire life. Shaitan has a great way, <laughs> a great way of making us feel insufficient with regards to what we possess of this world. You cannot be productive in your pursuit of the hereafter unless you're content with what you have in this dunya. There is absolutely no way around it. You cannot be productive in your pursuit of the hereafter unless you're content with what you have in this world. There is no way around it. You can maintain excellence in your pursuit of the world and your pursuit of the hereafter, but you cannot pursue the hereafter unless you're content with what you already have in this world. And the Prophet ﷺ warns us, of envying people. You know, it's really interesting because when you read about hasad and envy and the evil eye, you're usually reading about how to protect yourself from someone else putting it on you. But the greater concern should be whether you're putting it on someone else. Or whether you are coveting something, something that someone else has. That should be the greater concern. Because if someone harms you with the evil eye in this world, it will have dunyawi consequences. But if you harm someone else with the evil eye in this world, it will have akhirah consequences. And that's more important for you to focus on. So go back to the advice. It starts with salah. When the Prophet ﷺ said, the first thing you'll be asked about on the Day of Judgment is your prayer. And if it's good, then everything else will be good. In this life as well, Umar anhu said to Sa'ad anhu, as he assumed the governorship in Iraq, in Kufa, he said, حافظ على الصلاة فإنك إن ضيعتها فأنت لمن سواها أضيع. Guard your prayer because if you lose that, then you lose everything else. Because if you get that relationship right, then it should have, it should translate into priorities and into a better relationship across the board. Not just your relationship with Allah, but your relationship with your family, your relationship with the people closest to you, and your relationship with the world around you. Pray as if it's your last prayer. Don't think ahead. Stop yourself and tell yourself, this is the last time I get to do this. Don't say things today that you would have to apologize for tomorrow. Ask yourself the question in the midst of that argument, hey, as I'm speaking, is this something I will have to apologize for? Because I can't take for granted that I'll have the chance to apologize and lose hope in what other people possess.
My beloved brothers and sisters, praying salah on time is one of the most vital acts of worship in Islam. It strengthens your connection with Allah and provides a sense of discipline and peace in daily life. Each salah is an opportunity to pause, reflect and seek guidance amidst the chaos of the day. Prioritizing it demonstrates our devotion and gratitude to Allah for his countless blessings. Remember, delaying or neglecting salah not only weakens our faith but also robs us of the chance to earn immense rewards. Islam emphasizes the importance of consistency in good deeds even if they are small. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said the most beloved deeds to Allah are those that are consistent even if they are small. Simple actions like smiling, helping a neighbor or making daily dua can accumulate into significant rewards by maintaining a habit of doing good deeds. You not only earn Allah's blessings but also contribute positively to society and build a legacy of kindness. When you combine timely salah with consistent good deeds, you create a balanced and fulfilling life. Salah nurtures your spiritual well-being while good deeds bring positivity to the world around you. Together, they pave the way to success in this life and the hereafter. Let every action, no matter how small, be an expression of your faith and love for Allah. By doing so, you will find peace, purpose and closeness to your Creator. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.